Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about DIY and off-grid living. Tonight I want to share with you my solar system. It is a medium system with 6 kilowatt. I would want to say medium system with 6 kilowatt of panel. One inverter for now and another to be connected later on for a multi-unit setup with the Snyder Connex SW 4024 inverters we have two charge controllers Midnight Classic 150 and the 150 SL and we have 900 amp hours of batteries and those are lead acid batteries so in a subsequent video I will be showing you the batteries and the panels and we also have a generator, um, a champion 10 kilowatt in, um, generator. Um, so this video though will be focused on this internal component, sorry, the in-house components of the system. So for a quick rundown, here we have the, this, uh, this connect. SW is actually a new one we got run about seven days ago. We had that one about three years now. It has been working well. And this one is actually just going through the paces and being tested out so that later on when we acquire the additional hardware to facilitate the multi-unit setup, we, everything should be fine. Um, so where we were before now though, we were using this unit, it's the Outback 3524VFX, the vented model. So there are some vents on the side and so on that um, allow for here to get in but prevent bugs and so on. It also has a fan on the top. And that is what it looks like. The cables would connect here, positive and negative, and the earth there, and there's a big fan under here. So this unit, we were you, we it, it served its time essentially. It lasted around about nine years, and one day it suddenly stopped working. When I reached out to Outback, they said, "Well, this unit is expected to last around about ten years, so it's pretty much." At the end of its life, that's what I was told. The components look fine inside, but um, it, it lights up and so on, but you won't get any AC power from it. Um, I think you get run about one volt out of it when you connect the DC to it. So we had to upgrade or we had to replace it. So what we did was to buy the connects what drove the decision to buy these units though is this unit here our first charge controller it was a trace charge controller when we got it it's a 60 amp charge controller which it's a pulse width modulation charge controller it's not mppt as this one these it also it didn't come with a face and it, it, it yeah i had to buy this face separate um so it was a trace the the display is xantrix so for some persons who know the brand from that long know that it's actually the same brand that is now the snyder and because of how long and how well this unit worked we decided that it would be a good of good value to invest in the connects um, so, why we have two? Well, when we, we, we realized that based on the grow what, the number of grow what we noticed in our local market here, we realized that sooner or later we, we, are, we were not going to be able to get these units and they are, the price is going up locally. So, we went out and, and we got another one. So that whenever there's a problem, we would have another one we'd have one for backup so or we can interchange parts etc 
Um, so apart from that though, the so going through the this DC box is a midnight box and it was originally used with the outback inverter. Um, and we may or may not, well, I doubt we're gonna be using this to connect the these units. It should not be used. It's 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 very small and so on. The components will be very close inside here. But that will be a journey, and you can follow behind that, and you will see how we work that out. But we are some ideas are, are going around and we'll see how that works. But for sure, we're gonna need another. We so we have another DC 250 amp breaker. Um, we have we will be reusing that 500 amp um, shunt, which is now currently feeding this trimetric 2025 Bogart Engineering trimetric 2025. Um, currently, our battery is the bank is at 88 percent. It's now not exactly 9 p.m. So that's working well. This other meter is to measure the AC. It was in here. Um, when we changed the inverter, we just didn't bother to put that back in because we are another one is 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 on its way. We'll be getting another one and we'll be doing the, the measurement on both legs of the AC. Now you might notice we have a small cable here and a larger one here. But we probably will be changing those as well to balance that out. Um, I think this one is oversized though. So um, we have the AC power coming in. The generator plugs into here. Whenever we need to use the generator. And feeds into the AC into the inverter. Um, the classics SL and the... This one is the SL and this one is the Classic 150. So this is a Classic 150 SL. It has some timing issues, so it's not showing the amount of power we got from it today. Um, it's, run, it's normally close to 8, um, same 4 kilowatts. So this is showing 4.4 now, so it's normally close to that. Um, we have them in the follow me setup. Though, so, so, and yes, that's possible. So if you want to have two classics follow me and um, once they are of the same voltage yes that can happen and it's very important if you are running multiple charge controllers to have them set up to follow each other so that the batteries are, are maintained properly um, it's also a good idea to try and ensure that your units are the same so it's not so much of a good idea to have the the um, Xantrex charge controller running charging the same bank because the settings are not so close are never usually so close it's it's slightly difficult to balance the, the settings on those but if you have to this is a good unit um so we have some disconnect and you might be some dc breakers here you might be wondering why we have so many because we actually put a breaker on both legs coming from the panel and both legs coming going to the battery and this is so because experience has taught us that it's best this way we lost one of these before this one the SL we lost it temporarily before because um, actually my son connected the pan the cables for some of the panels when we were doing some work connected both cables together and then it fried the unit so for that reason we shut down both legs to ensure that we can completely isolate the unit and we have three for this side but both legs coming from the panel for this this one these three breakers here run those run this one and these run this one um here we have the scp that we'll be using to configure these uh, they, they are configured already but we'll be needing that as a part of the zambos network that will be connected here with this i think this is cat5 based on what the manual says we probably will have to terminate or make our own cable 
as to, to complete the network, one from here to the other port and that one, one from the port and that one to the SCP and we'll have to terminate there as that is there to terminate the other end of that. We'll be mounting another temperature sensor on that unit and the stocking ports, they are not enabled on these units. So that is pretty much that for that. And then we have these hardware that will be used to set up the multi-unit so we have a piece of cat um we have a piece of four knot cable and some miniature ac breakers we have some dc breakers we have some log ends and um, the other breaker and so on for the to, to facilitate the connection of these two inverters um and that that's it pretty much for this one stay tuned another one coming soon thank you